Manhattan cocktail party guests were recently overheard talking with each other when it came to light that one of them was coming to the end of his term as chairman of the board of an independent school. What does it take to be a good chairman of the board? Someone asked this guest. His response, one must have the heart of a philanthropist and the mind of an assassin. Now I can't say whether Jim Rohn has the mind of an assassin, but he does have a dangerous mind because he remembers everything. He has perfect recall. He remembers everything that anyone's ever said and can call it back months or even years later. And I can affirm unequivocally that he has the heart of a philanthropist. Or perhaps the better word, he has the heart of a benefactor. A word whose Latin root means to do service or to do good. Jim Rohn thinks carefully about the life he leads. His focus is not on what he can gain, but what he can give. He was introduced to Ignatian values through his dad, who graduated from Brooklyn Prep. And he passed on these values to his son Jim, who graduated from Regis. Jim Rowan is first and foremost a loving husband to Diane, a caring father of Caitlin, Jimmy the Eighth, and Megan. He is also a successful financial services executive and serves currently as Chief Operating Exec Officer of Renaissance Technologies. Jim Rohn's magnanimity, his generosity of heart, is shaped profoundly by his education at Fordham Prep. About this, one must comprehend and recognize an astonishing fact. As a student, Jim Rowan traveled two hours each way from Long Beach, Long Island to attend Fordham Prep. Despite this extraordinary commute, he made time to swim, play football, and serve as president of the Gaelic Society. So Jim traveled four hours daily for 180 class days for four years, 2,880 hours, or 120 days spent commuting between Long Island and the Bronx. Jim gives his time, wisdom, and resources to the prep because he feels a sense of obligation to his teachers, the Jesuits, the administrators, and his classmates. He is a triple ram having attended both Fordham College and the business school where he earned an MBA. Jim has extended himself to many people in many ways by acting as head of the Preps Investment Committee, serving on the board of Malloy College with his extraordinary generous gifts to Fordham Preps Endowment and to our Campus Improvements Program, and by establishing scholarships at Villanova and Fordham University for Fordham Prep alumni who demonstrate financial need. Jim is a benefactor indeed, and thanks to his legacy as a benefactor, many young men in future generations will be able to call the prep their home for four years. Please welcome James S. Rowan VII, class of 1982, as he addresses the graduates of the class of 2016. Good afternoon. Father Devron, members of the faculty, board members, parents, guests, and most of all, my brothers, the graduating class of 2016. To stand before you today is truly an honor for me. But before I begin, I would like to recognize the faculty and the administration for their devotion and support of the students of Fordham Prep during these recent emotionally challenging times. So from all of us, a sincere thank you. As chairman of the board, I spend a great deal of time with alumni, regardless if they graduated 70 years ago or 12 months ago. The reminiscing I do with them will be the same reminiscing I do with you in about an hour embellished stories of eluding the dean or negotiating your way out of jug, service trips or senior pranks or the insanely difficult science exams. I can still remember the answer to the extra credit question on my sophomore chemistry exam. It was emotional rescue by the Rolling Stones. 
And the reason I highlight that is I got it right. Alumni will always agree on two things. Friendship sports at Fordham Prep will last a lifetime. And the other is, the prep influenced their lives in ways they never could have imagined. Four years ago, your parents gave you a gift of a Jesuit education. But more important, the opportunity to witness what it means to be a man for others. Today, you are joining a long list of alumni whose legacy began with this rite of passage, a prep graduation. The alumni included distinguished doctors and attorneys and senators, congressmen, law enforcement, military personnel, members of the religious orders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, educators, craftsmen, husbands, and most importantly, fathers. But it's not their career or position in life that defined them. It was their legacy, a legacy that comprised a lifetime of relationships, accomplishments, truths, and values carried on in the lives that they had touched. I would ask that you take a moment to reflect on the one or two individuals, and let's not include family members, that you give credit to for influencing your life. Perhaps it's a teacher, a coach, a classmate, a neighbor, a friend, a coworker, a manager, or again, a member of the religious order. What did these individuals that immediately came to mind ask you for in return? That answer is not so obvious. The Fordham Prep Hall of Honor has dozens of examples of extraordinary people. Men like you that sat in those seats, got involved, and changed lives expecting nothing in return. Here are just a few examples of some of those extraordinary individuals. The most Reverend John J. Hughes. I'm not sure he knew what his legacy would be when he came from Ireland at age 20. And he certainly didn't know what it was, what it was going to be when he was initially rejected from the local seminary based on the lack of education. Passion, drive, vision, and perhaps the unwillingness to be deterred led this immigrant to not only fulfill his dream of being a priest, but to make education available to others. By the age of 44, he had founded St. John's College, today known as Fordham University and Fordham Prep. He also assisted in founding of Manhattan College, Manhattanville College, and the College of Mount St. Vincent. His legacy evolved from his passion, his compassion, and his, willing to, his willingness to go above and beyond. More than 18,000 Fordham Prep alumni over 175 years can trace part of their legacy to his. The most Reverend Walter P. Kellenberg, Fordham Prep Class 1990. He lived on 166th Street. Making education available to Catholic youth was his passion. As Rockville Center's founding bishop, he founded three colleges, 18 high schools, and scores of parish grammar schools. His legacy, he was not merely a witness to change, but he was a catalyst for it, addressing many of the social issues of the day and advocating for the avail availability of quality education to improve the lives of young Catholics. Staff Sergeant Robert C. Murray, Fordham Prep Class, 1964. He spent his young, young years on Marion Avenue in the Bronx, graduating the prep with honors. He went to Fordham University, and upon graduation in 1968, he was accepted to Harvard Business School. Um, upon receiving his notice, his draft notice, he put his Harvard plans on hold and served his country during the height of the Vietnam War. In August 1974, Vice President Gerald R. Ford presented the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Robert C. Murray's family. A member of Robert's squad tripped an enemy grenade rigged as a booby trap. Robert unhesitantly threw himself on the grenade, absorbing the full and fatal impact of the explosion. He would prove himself a man for others by laying down his life to save his friends. Robert was 23. A friend commented on Robert by saying, Robert always tried to make a difference. Robert's legacy and ultimate sacrifice endured. Joseph Lawrence Haysung Chow, after graduating the prep in 2003, he attended Amherst College. And upon graduation, he was sworn into the Peace Corps as a volunteer. On his application, giving credit for his desire to help others from his time at Fordham Prep. Joe moved to Kenya, where he taught chemistry and physics. 
and after experiencing the poverty firsthand, he, compact, he contacted Fordham Prep to, to arrange for book donations for the poorest students of Kenya. Early in 2008, the Peace Corps suspended its program in Kenya due to the threat of violence. Joe's commitment to being in the service of others did not waver. He volunteered to take a position in Tanzania. Joe began to teach chemistry and college-level math and physics. He gave swimming lessons and worked out with the cross-country team. September 22, 2009, Joe was killed in a tragic accident in Tanzania. Joseph's legacy was shaped by his passion to help others without the need for recognition. His memory is honored in Africa as well as by the wider PrEP community. These are just a few examples of the impact the PrEP has had, PrEP alumni has had. And there are hundreds more. Their legacy endures, in some cases, more than a century. I want to share one more story, and it's from a different perspective. It's my story. One person got involved, went above and beyond, and I feel changed the course of my life. That, in, that individual is Father Stan Okonski. It was early in senior year, and my mentor group was in a computer center over the library. Father Okonski was calling members of my mentoring group up to inquire about the status of their college applications, but more importantly, the college essay. My mother during the previous summer told me not to apply to college. We couldn't afford it. So when it was my turn to meet with Father Stan, I just said, I'm taking time off from school and I'm gonna work at my uncle's hardware store. Father Okonski responded with, I see. How many of you have Father Okonski? When you hear I see, it's just not a good outcome, right? It's basically, it's just not an answer that he's gonna be happy with. He asked why and I told him my mother felt that I could be successful at whatever I put my mind to. And then sheepishly said, college is expensive. He asked if I thought about Fordham University, and I said no. There was no point. The decision was made, and I went to get up. But the conversation didn't end. Father said, let's talk about this decision again. There are many other alternatives that you may want to explore. I've learned that Jesuits don't give you the answer, but boy, they'll support you in your journey to find it. A few days later, he said to me, do me a favor. Fill out the college application for Fordham and start working on your essay. So after that, Father Stan would ask about what's the status with the application. He'd ask what version I was on my essay. He would critique it and he would give it back to me. The day before the Fordham application was to be submitted, he stopped by my desk and said, tell your mother that I'm sure it will be all right if you decide to go to Fordham. Needless to say, I attended Fordham University concentrated my classes three days a week and went to school at night, took loans, and worked in the hardware store the other three days a week. I asked you earlier to reflect on the individuals that you give credit to for influencing your life. Father Stan's willingness to get involved, provide support and encouragement, clearly sent my life in a different direction. The reason I stand before you today is because Father Stan was involved 34 years ago. You will shortly become alumni of a high school with origins dating back 175 years. You now have the tools not only to survive, but to thrive. Honor your parents and your alumni, the alumni before you. Be one of those extraordinary people that gets involved, changes lives, and expects nothing in return. Your legacy will be how you lived your life. Let the world experience the ripple effect of your legacy. Congratulations again to my prep brothers graduating class of 2016.